uh, he's going to be going through the sound system with us. Okay. I promise you, you will all be audio engineers when I get done with it. Um, basically, we have a purely automated sound system for what you'll be doing in the gym. Obviously, this is the rack. Hopefully, it'll have, it does have a lock on the door, so therefore, it should be locked. Um, over on the right-hand side, and everybody can take a quick look, is the control center. There's a little keypad with knobs and so forth. Why they stuck it there makes it a little inconvenient. But, uh, okay. The silver plate is basically the function control. The black plate to the right should be a power on-off. I don't see a key in it, so we won't go over that one. Has everybody looked at it? Yeah. It's a little silver two gang plate <laughs> with two knobs on it, a bunch of LED lights and labels. The knobs are dual function. You turn it to select the function, you push it to engage that function. The one on the left should be your source select. The one on the right is preset select. Okay. Um, I'm going to tell you right now that the very top one, the very top setting on the left-hand control is your most important. If that is not engaged and at maximum, there will be no sound in the gym. Uh, y Priamp, who made the piece, um, did it this way. It's basically a master volume control for the sound system. So you scroll the knob, the left-hand knob, scroll to the top, the LED lights, you push it. The bottom LEDs should be all lit up all lit up red. That would be, mean that the master volume control is at maximum. If it is not at maximum or all the way off, no matter what you do with any of the other sources as far as their volume, it's going to be dead. So make sure that the top LED on the left hand side is lit and the bottom LEDs are at maximum to start. You can select, oh, let's do this. We're going to go to the main power. You have to be careful about storing stuff here and just yeah. blocking that and it covers it up. I'm not going to start it. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. To turn the system on, this, this, appears, yeah. you don't know where it is. this is a power sequencer. handles all the electronics. Do not turn off any unit individual. I'm going to manually turn off the power ramp. You turn it to full on, two clicks over, and as you can see, everything lights up. The power ramp's not on. You're not going to get sound. So if somebody has been in here and has manually turned off any unit, that's going to give you a problem. So never use the main power buttons. Always use the master. Master power to turn everything on. And turn it off. Okay. This is the main power amplifier. This is actually what drives the speakers in the gym. Uh, levels, I see that they're set a little bit low, but that's okay. I like to set them all the way up. It's not going to hurt anything, so we're just going to keep it a little. That way, with the system calibrated all the way up, nobody can screw anything up. Okay. Next piece up, this is the main controller. This process is all the audio. There's no buttons on it. It does have three LEDs. If they're not lit, it's not on. There's a problem. Call us. Because basically, there's, you know, it's so automated and so simple that there's really nothing for you to touch in this rack. The next unit up is your docking station for I iPad, I iPhone. I don't have one. Somebody has a docking station, mm -hmm. or you've got the small. Yeah, yeah right you've got different ones. Right All right, right. For the small one, and for the older, larger ones, just slip it in. The function of it. Um, I'm really not that familiar with this piece, um, but basically it's a CD player, standard functions of a CD player that everybody's... So an iPhone will plug in there? Yeah. Do you have one? Who's on Tom's playlist here? I don't think I have any music at all. Who has music? Who has music? Yeah. Uh, let's have some music that I like. Oh, not um, Angel. <laughs> I don't know how to operate this. I've got an uh, Android phone. Um, He's going to get some music. So 
do you envision leaving this whole thing on forever? Do you turn it off every night, or just when you want it? Or okay. With how all, do you operate it? all electronics, I don't know if you should have two of them plugged in at once. Oh, let's see. Yeah. It will be confusing. Two songs at once. As far as the power, it will not hurt it to leave it on. Uh, like any light bulb, if you have a thousand hour light bulb, you turn it on, it'll last a thousand hours. If you turn it off and on, it may, it may burn out at 500. Mm. Um, it, but I'll be honest with you, the way things, the way audio electronics have been designed lately, I'm the service manager. I usually don't see anything for five years, a minimum of five years before anything fails these days. So the reliability of all this stuff is such that um, I can tell you with the wireless microphones, out of the 300 I've installed in the last five years, I've had no failures whatsoever. Um, the Biamp, they seem to be quite reliable. FM tuners, what's to go wrong with an FM tuner? Um, the only thing that might happen, if the CD player is used a lot, then the laser may end up burning out. But 99% of people don't use CDs anymore. So, you know, just bring your phone in, or just play your music. Um, and this is only for the gym? It, this system is only for the gym. Okay. As you can hear, there is music. I have selected the iPod in, input, which is the second from the bottom. I read all Yeah. Okay. You just you you twisted that for volume? volume? Yes. You turn for volume. How do you make the green go up? You push it. You see it's sequencing through the inputs. If you push it, leave it at what you want. Okay. And if anybody wants to go in right now, push and twist, give it a shot. Who's going to be? Steve, Steve, you're the audience. Steve, 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 <laughs> I will be very honest, the right hand set of controls has presets on them. I'm going to imagine that they are buying presets for certain inputs. I don't know how it was programmed, so therefore you can push buttons and not going to blow anything up. What's the range of All the way across the bar into the gym. Now they're 300 feet line of sight. Okay. So through, uh, I'm not sure where. The antennas are probably up in the ceiling or maybe. Oh no, they're actually in the gym. We're promoted in the gym, so there shouldn't be any problem there. And this right knob is the, the volume that has to be all the way on? No. Which left hand knob is the main function, input source control, and volume control. Uh -huh. If you the left hand button, if you push it and sequence it to the top LED, that is the master okay. volume oh, okay. of the whole system. Okay. Okay. All the other sources have their own individual volume. Right. So if that one was low though, yeah, then the gym should shut off. Right. Exactly. The sound will shut off if the top input select button has been activated and the volume turned all the way down, then everything else below it is not going to generate sound. Okay. So you can cross mix your music with the microphone by adjusting it separately? Yes. Okay. A little inconvenient to do it in here. I kind of wish it had been put out in the gym, um, but that's not something that this system... So, um, just so everybody there. understands that there's no remote control, there's no anything. Out there, so there's so no, you got to run in here to turn it off. So to turn it on. You can't go crazy at halftime right. unless you got a guy running. Now, what I will <laughs> warn everybody about if they're going to be using the wireless, and we are going to play with the wireless in a minute. Um, you're testing it in here, you're going to hear it in there. You turn it up so that you can really hear it in here, you go in there, it'll feedback guarantee. Because it'll, you know, you're having to hear around two corners. You have somebody in the other room letting you know. A, yeah. B, C, one, two, That's usually one, yeah. the best practice. Mm -hmm. But for someone who's pretty alert with audio, mm -hmm. then you can test it in here, mm -hmm. walk in there, and see if the volume's good. And if that's it, you can make note on how many LEDs are lit. Okay. You know, use your, it's audio. Use your ears, not your eyes. Mm -hmm. it's the biggest concern that I have with uh, customers. Do you have a system? That easily can tie into this remotely. <laughs>
right? No. <laughs> is there a module or something to have some volume runoff control? There are. This is wireless loop. The next unit, I'm not sure if this has, I don't think this has a network uh, card to it. Some of the, this is what's known as a DSP, a digital signal processor. There are many units out there nowadays that have network interface and that you can, with an iPad and some software, which is free by the company, walk into that room and have your mixing panels, all the controls of this, on your iPad. I don't think this is one of them. Okay. That's your wish list for next year, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> I know we are expecting a lot of churches to have big digital consoles that they, you know, that are usually up in the balcony and they can't really hear the system. Yeah. Especially if you're doing monitors for the band down on the stage, they bring your iPad out right. and they stand and go test, test, test. test. You no, know, this is great. Yeah. Yeah. The days of having an engineer up there while you're trying to test, they're over. Which is one of the greatest things in the world for internet <laughs> live sound mixing. Um, so we're pretty clear on. Uh, what the uh, cassette and iPod docking is. You have an FM uh, radio here. Um, the consultant who designed the system did not include an exterior antenna, so you are at the mercy of what you have wherever the antenna got put. Uh, hopefully Drew did put it up in the ceiling or something. Uh, so you may only get half a dozen stations. It's not like you're going to get everything across the board. Um, so that Real quick, Amber is asking why do we have an FM radio station here? The reason why is in case of emergencies. We go to the radio for national yep. emergencies like that. This becomes an emergency evacuation center really quickly, so that happens in case of emergencies. So, yeah. and that's yeah. so it's kind of part of the emergency. Our emergency plan we don't have set yet, but that'd be part of the plan. Yep. Go to the radio, go to the if there is a certain station that um, you need to listen to, put it up on a, uh, a preset and just mark it emergency uh, radio. Um, wireless microphones. There are two wireless microphones. They have been programmed on proper channels. That's a handheld mic. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's a good one. Are these just for the gem or are they anywhere? Just for the gem. Like a handheld mic. And you plug these from Yeah, they'll work simultaneously because they're on different channels. Oh, oh wait a second. What, is, what channel is yours on? On three? One one. Oh. Okay. How's it going, Drew? Now you know how to program it. Well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Wireless microphones, performance mics. There's power switch on it. You turn it on, you see that this being group one, channel three, it's the same as that. He has channel one dash one. In the manual, I'm not going to train, I mean, how can I start this? Wireless microphones broadcast on frequencies that are in between TV channels. Okay? There are a lot of digital TV channels out there, and the wireless microphone industry was hammered in 2010. We lost all of the 700 megahertz, all of the 800 megahertz, and part of the 900 megahertz band. So we're stuck between the uh, 5, 6, and 900 uh, megahertz. So we're in between TV channels. We found that in this area, right now, Group 1, Channel 3, there is no TV station there. If, there, if we had interference, there would be some type of a signal there. But this is the broadcaster. There you go. And each one of the receivers has information, an LED bar that will tell you that you are, in fact, getting signal. These are performance microphones. They like to work here. They do not work here. They will not pick up anything. So if somebody's talking, this is the way they're supposed to be talking. Not like, you know, not like this. When you see people doing that, that's wrong. This is a performance mic. It likes to be about that far away from the mouth. Um, get the glasses out. I'm on, I've just changed the input to wireless mic number two volume. 
test, 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 one, two, one, two, one, test, 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 one, two, two, two. As you can see, it's getting pretty loud out there. I've got three LEDs lit. Let's go out and take a listen real quick. So the system does get relatively loud. If somebody could run in, um, have somebody run in, turn the volume up a little bit. Let's see if we can get some feedback. Test. Test one, two. If you can see, it's not feeding back. We're going to try and get the uh, sound up a little bit louder. Testing one. This should be wireless mic number two. Testing one, two. In gets something and everybody's screaming, then the wireless mic is the way to go. But remember, you have to stay on the mic. <laughs> <laughs> um, four LEDs, four out of five. The four five you're getting. Yeah. Okay. At five you get feedback? Okay. So do not exceed four. Uh, there are volume controls on the receivers, leave them at maximum. If you are seeing signal on the wireless microphone receivers, Always check to make sure that the volume is at maximum on the front panel. Nobody should be touching those. In the ceiling, that's the speaker. There's three in this row, three in the middle row, three in the other row. Um, I do not believe this is a dual zone, which doesn't make sense because your air wall will not separate uh, the room enough for sound isolation. Uh, it will kick pretty good. These are relatively loud speakers as you can see. I mean it should cut the musters when it comes to a lot of people in here. Um, I wouldn't use, if somebody requests a, using these speakers for a dance, I don't think I'd do that. Um, what's that? Well, you never know. <laughs> well, why, why do you say that? Um, these are public address speakers and with today's music, if it's for young people, you could probably get away with it for square dancing or something like that. <laughs> but there you go, Tom. <laughs> All right, I'm good. Um, the music that young kids, the hip hop music, they use a device during the record uh, portion of the, you know, to make the music. It's called a, a bass accentuator. And if you have big large subwoofers, that's what they like because it, you know, it gives you the, you know, the action and so forth. These do not produce real low bass. And what will happen is that bass going into that system is just going to destroy things. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so hip hop music and stuff like that, you know, you've got to be careful when you're playing that music, especially off an iPad or an iPhone rather, um, that you have to watch the volume. If you hear popping sounds coming out of the speakers, you have to turn the volume down. Hip hop music and that sort of stuff, rap, just destroy speakers. Unfortunately, but that's the way they like it. And you're not just saying that. No, I'm not okay. just saying that. I know that. I don't like that kind of music. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just say I, I don't find any functional use for it. <laughs> um, but then again, if you heard the music I listened to, you'd go, that's strange. Can we get a test run with the music and the microphone on? Yes, you can. Since you have the microphone, who, let me let me see a show of hands. Who might be using this system? Okay, go in there and put some music on and bring our mics up. Try not to break anything. Okay, wireless mic number two is okay. Bring up wireless microphone number one and some music. And actually bring wireless two down a little bit. Okay, well, if it doesn't work, then you got this gentleman's call. He'll come. 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 
testing. One, two, two. Good. This microphone versus my microphone is a little different. Test. One, two. One. basically pulls out of the floor just like every other straightforward lift the latch and pull it out um, these are not screws they're just pins to hold it in place inside here there is two microphone and a pair of RCA jacks the microphone jacks are microphone level not mixing console output level I'm just yeah um. Yeah, they're microphone only. You can use a hardwired microphone if somebody, if you're going to do announcements out here. I believe, I'm not sure, but in the handover equipment, we may have uh, included a hardwired microphone for this. Uh, uh, I haven't seen one. I've only seen the wireless. Yeah, but I have boxes of handover okay. stuff. So you just plug it in, set it up on, there may be a little desk stand, because uh, I don't know what's in the handover stuff right now. But you can plug two mics in. You can plug also. two microphones in. Um, hopefully... Um, which makes a lot of sense. I'm not sure if I were specking the project, I would give, uh, I would sell microphones with an on-off switch because a lot of times, you know, it's wise that the announcer doesn't have his mic on. Yeah. <laughs> all too often. That's fun. I want some bread. <laughs> you can use all four at the same time? Yes. All okay. four microphones and both sets of music can be played simultaneously. But okay. that's still controlled by that? Control? It is still controlled by that. The volume's so some, still over there? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to make a suggestion. I probably shouldn't, but I, sh I will. That one of those inputs should be converted to a line level input. And the reason being, as you know, well, this is a, this isn't a school or anything necessarily. So I don't know how elaborate production of games would be here. If it's just sports games, it'll probably never happen. Um, but having a line input there on one of the XLRs would allow somebody with a um, a little mixing console with more control having it out here so that you could have a couple of microphones, a CD player, your iPad, and so forth, and have all the controls out here going into one input of the sound system. That makes more sense. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think running back that. Yeah, yeah it's very inconvenient. Stuff. Yeah. Um, it's. You can't mix with the audio in? You can mix going into the microphone input, take yeah. a mixing console, yeah, but yeah. the mixing console comes out at a line level yeah. at a one volt. A microphone is like 50 millivolts, mm -hmm. so you'd be overdriving it. Sure. But if you, keep, if you keep the master volume of your mixer really low, mm -hmm. you can plug into the mic. It is doable, but you better have at least 10% of the knowledge I have. So what, what does that mean to do what you just said? It means that... And how do we do that? Okay. The two XLR jacks, the three-pin jacks, are balanced microphones. If this had a jack on it, you plug this in directly, and it would work. If you want to use a mixing console out here, let's say somebody has a little Behringer 6 input, and you want two or three mics and different, you know, a CD player and your uh, iPhone um, out here, and you want the volume controls here, you can do that. You can take all that equipment, put it together, take the output of the mixer, the line output, and plug it into the microphone. Mm -hmm. But because the line output is 100 times louder than the microphone, you right. have to keep the master volume very low. You start talking. If you want to use a microphone. If you want to use one of those XLR jacks. I think he's asking what it would take to switch it over to what? The, oh, to switch it over, volume. probably just a label and going into the uh, DSP and putting in a 40 dB pad in the software. It's so you would have to pull the other wire. You just no, 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 no. You just go one of the sound system switch on that. Exactly. Back. Now, there's also an outboard piece of gear. So you can do that today? No, I don't have the software on my laptop. Is it software issue? Probably. Uh, I mean, it, yeah, you're it, not doing any hardware. It's no, there's no hard. It's just time for somebody to plug in uh, and re redesign the circuitry within the software to okay. change a couple of things. Um, there's an easier way, which is a little $15 device that takes line level and converts it into microphone level, and you can plug that in. It's the same thing. It just guarantees you that the uh, mixer will never overdrive the mic in. And where do you get that? Any music music store has it. Where do you plug it in? At? Uh, you plug 
the output of the mixer using an XLR jack into this little device. It's a little tube about yay big, about yay long, you know, about that diameter. And it has the components in it that'll take that hundred, you know, that one volt signal and drop it down into a 50 millivolt signal. So guitar center would have it. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Now you can also use the RCA inputs, which is a line input. Yeah. Um, most mixers do come out as a balanced signal, a plus, minus, and ground. Those RCAs are just plus and ground. It's a different form of uh, signal transfer. What is this whole um, system marked as in there? If you're okay. The so it's, uh, it, does it all run off the same volume? Or? Yes, on those on the same uh, on the same control. Okay, volume? you'll see that it's master volume. I think it's wire, uh, microphone one, microphone two, which are those jacks right there. Okay. Then wireless one, wireless two, which are these wireless. Okay. okay. Then it's. Uh, not sure what the third one is probably auxiliary AUX, okay. which is which is those RCAs. Okay. So you can plug the mixer into those. Those are a high level input, high impedance, and I'm hoping that they did put the uh, um, unbalanced to balanced uh, transformers in there because those RCAs don't travel 100 feet. Uh, they like to you know the farthest they'll go is like a 20, 25 foot cable. After that, you start. Getting yeah, oscillations and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, so hopefully that was handled. Unless you use the, uh, we do carry a, a wire, a very low capacitance digital wire that can run about 100 feet on uh, high impedance unbalanced. Um, so those are those are basically the the two functions that they have in there. There is electricity. If you were to use a little mixer, you've got power there. Um, the electricity is for the scoreboard uh, controller, which. Apparently does go wireless up to the scoreboards. Um, this is the only one here. There's not another one. I don't see one over there. No. Okay. So this is your sideline mixing uh, section. Okay. Right okay. next to your Good office. office. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Yeah, I know. Huh? Yeah. 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 If you can shoot it, you can look to the iPad through the RCA. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think those screw. It just looks like looks yeah, look like after. Cool. Function of this sound system. Um, I believe those two antennas up there, those are for the wireless mics. Hopefully nobody will take a basketball and hit them. Just know. one. I did a hockey facility one time, put all kinds of DJ lights and everything in the place. And sure enough, the first day you see kids whack. My stuff trying to get everything. So, um, that only happened once. Uh, not sure what the FM uh, ALS antenna is. You did not point that out to me. It's up here. So those, are wireless, those are the wireless mic antennas. It okay. may also be there. Don't see it. It's somewhere. I'm pretty sure it's up there because it, it was an ad that we actually ran it in one of these contacts. <laughs> broke. We came out in here, intercepted the wire, and ran the wire up there. Maybe that was for that. Maybe it was just what it was. But I just, we'll push this way. It does work with, um, when you go back into the rack room. I'll pull out some uh, uh, headsets and we'll take a look at it. So what are we looking for? What is um, it? ALX, it's a William Sound FM. There, uh, there should be not. If by chance, and this, these instructions will be in the uh, O&M manuals, when you turn the power on, you, you'll notice up here we have Group 1, Channel 1, and Group 1, Channel 3. These microphones cannot be on the same channel together, but they must be aligned one on here and one on there. When you power it up, in the little LED display here, it'll show you what group and channel it is. If it's not on the proper group and channel, you push and hold the left hand button for a few seconds. It'll uh, one of the two numbers will disappear. You push the right hand button until you get the proper group. You push this button again. The other number will light up, and you push it until you match it up. Then hit the left hand button again. It's just a, a series of programming like that. I mean, it's it is idiot proof. So everybody here is now a genius at it. But you do have to have the same group and channel number for this microphone here. 
if you want to label these number one and number two, you can do that. But either one, you know, you can have if one microphone breaks and you want to, you know, you know it, it's basically one mic to one receiver. Correct. That simple. Um, but both of these mics will work on either receiver. Just put them in the right channel. Exactly. Yeah, nice channel. Okay. The system has an assisted listening system. It's an FM broadcast. The, that unit right there. Just basically, for anybody who needs assisted listening, they'll be issued one of these. I would grab a, um, when you're doing that, grab the driver's license so you know who has them. Uh, and then when they come back, when they bring them back, they can have the driver's license back. If they don't bring them back, now you know who has them. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. How many does he have? Um, not sure. Probably three or four sure. per room. And there's one here for the gym and one for each one of the activity rooms. Got it. Um, very simple. Just clip it on the ear, turn it on, and buy them. It's that simple. They're already pre-programmed. So pre-programmed to this? Yes. We're going to take that with this. That pretty much sums up this whole thing. I mean, it's that easy. Everything, all control is based off this uh, little panel here. Um, I don't... Okay. Beautiful. Back to the power. Put this on remote. Now this key pad over here works. There is a key. I don't know how you want to handle that. If this is on remote, which is straight up and down, this keypad works. Okay. You can see? It's turning everything off and on. If this is on on, this is irrelevant. Oh, okay. Okay. I need that up to whoever's going to be in charge. Do all, the, do all the keys have the same, uh, is all the same key? Nope. No. Okay. Big one for in here, little one for in the, the wall side. Mm -hmm. um, there are some basic manuals in here already. <clears throat> this was our working diagrams for putting everything in, wall brackets and everything, how the speakers are hung. In the back of it, there should be single line drawings of the circuitry. These are actually point to point um, with Drew's uh, handwriting <coughs> where he's made, not changes, but he's made some notes on it. I'm sure he's going to come in and grab this at one point and you'll, you'll get new copies in the, uh, the hard copy of the O&Ms. We always yeah. include single line. So that if somebody has any electronic knowledge and wants to try and troubleshoot something before you go call me, then that's me. No, I'm here in Orange. I like the weather. Yeah, Orange, Main Street. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> no, my, about 10 years ago, my doctor said that I, the reason why I was depressed a lot is that I'm allergic to snow. <laughs> and you know, I haven't been depressed since. <laughs> any more questions about this system? Can we move to the activity room? Um, oh, assisted, assisted listening. That is the FM transmitter. The, uh, these are mics. Wireless uh, mics. Wireless mics. This is the FM tuner. Mm -hmm. This is the source for the docking. Yes. And that. What we have there. here is the main system volume, which yeah. has to be all the way up. Microphone one, microphone two are the okay. out on the floor. Right. Okay. My wireless mic one, wireless mic two, okay. wireless mic one and two. Okay. Okay, line in volume, that is out there. That's okay. the RCA jacks in the floor. Then you have CD, iPod, which is this device. Okay. Then FM, which okay. is this device. Then, okay. it then it sequences uh, back up to the master. Simple as that. So that line is the only one you have to worry about power, turning everything yeah. on. Either you, you either keep this in the remote if you want to lock this up. Okay. Put that in the remote and have the key here. Okay. And whoever's going to be in charge keeps that key. If it turns out that um, somebody loses this key, you have a backup. Okay, I'd take that and put it in the drawer or something. And this is that is the main. That's the main speaker power amplifier. Okay, that's the amplifier. Okay. Now, again, if something isn't working, always look to see if somebody's turned the power off. We've got power switches here. That is always left on. Power switch here. If the FM tuner's not working, 
same thing over here. Always check power switches first, especially the amplifier. Because I don't know how many service calls I do in a year where I go out and I turn the power amp on. <laughs> Just like the old style stereo, right? Yeah, yeah. You, know, you have your turntable, your CD, you have your your uh, cassette, and, mm -hmm. you know, so and, you and you have to press one button. <laughs> So, so that line in, that's for the line. What's the component? Yeah, the, the line input, the line in volume are the RCA jacks out on the floor. Okay, everything else pretty much subs. Which is the component volume? Component bar? Oh, no, no. oh it says CD iPod. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Cool. Two rooms, identical to what you just learned. Everything's the same. This rack and that rack. The only difference between them is when you are on the on the controller, instead of presets, this is for combining the two rooms or making them separate systems. Okay. Oh, okay. Cool. Only the top two. If you're going to combine the rooms, hit it, turn the screen, they're now combined. I don't know because I when I was here yesterday or the day before putting the TVs up, I don't know exactly which if it is one of these controls is the master, or if they're simultaneous, if they track each other, I don't know. Um, just playing around with it, we'll let you know. Um, but if you want to uncombine it, bring it down so that that one's flashing, now they're uncombined. They're two totally separate systems. Okay. Is it labeled that way? Yes, it is combined so room the... and uncombined room. Oh, there you go. Okay. Right. Almost idiot proof. Uh, the antennas for the wireless mics here, uh, we're on channel 1-2 for this microphone. It's identical to what we just went over. Is that 1-2 the same as that 1-? Dash? That is 1-1, dash 1-3. One, one dash okay. And yeah, we have to check that rack to make sure that that's on 1-4. Because if this is on the same channel, yes. then you can get talking is, in the gym. If somebody <laughs> changes this to 1-1 one one or 1-3, one and this room is on and they're doing yoga, right. but that room has a dance going on, yeah, you're going to be interrupting this yoga class. So all these all wireless receivers need to be on separate channels. Um, no. There's nothing different here. You have a four-channel amplifier um, that has been set up for the different speakers. Um, let's take a look at the other unit real quick and turn that one on. Right now, when you combine the rooms, I'm going to guess that that is going to be your master. For the simple fact that the amplifier is not in this, this rack. Those four channels are for the two, two channels for that room, two channels for this room. So, so I'm going to. Does that have to be on? Both of them have to be on if you're going to combine them. If you're not going to combine them, and you this want to just not have this room? Correct. You turn this unit on and make that sure that it's. Does that control just the whole room? Just make sure that they're both uncombined. Um, does this control TV? As it stands right now, you have TVs on the walls with no sources anywhere. So physical controlling, if you mean power on, off, channel up, down, that sort of stuff, it's, no, it does not. Speakers. Audio is all we care about. Yes. The audio, and I know, no, I've heard rumors. TV is not hooked to fix speakers. At this point, no. Speakers. Um, there is discussions back at the office on what's going to happen with that. Uh, there is interpretations in the contract that one person interpreted it one way, one person interpreted it the other way. What will happen is we need to have whatever source that's going to be decided. It can, it, this is the stop here. It can, it can happen, but right now, as far as the way that we look at it, it's not designed. So, Tom, I would tell you is that I honestly think that we need to make it happen because these TVs that classically have like really low sound, all the flat screens are really low, low sound. So, I mean, I when look at design the room, what we'll be using it for. First, my first question was, why do we have flat screens in there? And I was like, okay, it was a dance room, right? Like, why do we have flat screens? And then they were saying, well, because some instructors run the video, and I was like, what? Like, they're instructing, why is the video? But since they do have the flat screens and they do have that type of usage, and eventually there will be, you know, you yeah, have a meeting room in here. You could. The meeting room doesn't have. Yes, right. doesn't no, have you can bring chairs in here and. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. So yeah, I, 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 I Okay, I looked at that rack. I know that there is an HDMI cable in the rack that goes to the TV and a computer VGA with audio going back to the TV. So they're set up for that. They're yeah. set up so that you can plug 
computer in. If they're doing aerobics in here, yes. The aerobics instructors usually make CDs. And if they're ill and still want to have their class, there'll be a CD and somebody will throw it in. They'll still have the class. So yeah, there, so there are reasons for having. So, so I, my question would be, no, no, my question, my statement would be is, yes, we want the TV hooked up to the sound. Yes. That's my statement. And but that would just be this room, because the other rooms are original speakers. Correct. i got to talk to the other yes. people like that. Yeah. Okay. But for this, these two rooms, if we have the TVs here, we have the sound system here, we want the ability to hook them up and be able to use them. So whenever we need to make that happen, let us know we want that to happen for sure. Okay, I believe yes. um, okay. Does anybody have any information as to if and when cable TV is coming in or satellite or I mean, sources? Because there were, in, I know that there was, as you can see, there's no DVD player, there's no yeah. satellite TV, there's no cable TV, there's nothing there. Mm -hmm. um, even though there are mm -hmm. cables running. It can be connected, but we don't run that. That's yeah. been done by your, your other contractors. As a matter of fact, he ran, they ran, they ran that in here. They were running that. Yeah, that's another thing. So I'll a question for uh, you. Yeah. If there's a, a <coughs> good solid question. internet connection, that's good too. Yeah. Well, we do have Wi-Fi. Well, I didn't know they ran. They were. Yeah, we have cars. That's the reason these are. That's there. the reason these are sitting out because the data guys are trying to get it behind here. To, like they're hit, so they should, like they're hit. Okay. Because um, everything's going over network. Okay. That makes sense. Everything. So is Cox hooked up here and not here? What's that? Is Cox? Cox well, all Cox did was come into that room. Right. But nobody's pulled internet cables or cable cable. You know, so we have to draw a Thank you. Coax to Who's doing that? Is that Doug's guy? Now, in reality, it should be Doug's guy. I don't care. Do we use that? Uh, I see cable TV, or I see flex going to the TVs. That's really not where you want your cable connection. Right to here? In here, yeah. You just have the audio out. Yeah, because you're going to get a set top box. I think there's a big building to do that. Okay. If that, well, if that pipe goes back to here at all. There is a pipe that goes back to here. Okay. That was done. Yeah, no, then you're fine. I was, and Tom, another question would be too good. for us just to for that, just to go and talk about it a little bit second. But if they're going to connect like their DVD or the Blu-ray, okay. we don't have that right now either. And how are we going to connect it? You can't be here. Have the car. There's a question you guys are talking about. What was the whole ideology of having it, and how is this to operate? Now there is also uh, a number of things that if the instructor um, is doing how they can. Oh yeah, okay. there is power out. They can put a laptop here. Mm -hmm. Ever use Google TV or mm -hmm. Apple TV or anything? Yeah, yeah. I use Amazon all the time. Yeah. Just so there is a connection. You have the um, HDMI inputs are on the side, so you can just reach back there, slip in your Google we, TV. We got instructors are still using cassette tapes. Because I know guys. Wait. You want you want to be dating? Yeah. yeah. I have in my collection eight tracks. Um. So can we go ahead then? Let's let's have one of the guys car. here combine the one system. Drive, yeah. We do. So have one of the guys here combine the systems, play the music, let's do some test runs. So, okay. Uh, Asan, you're first. Who's up? Yeah. Asan's going first. Okay. Steve, help him out. <laughs>